Here we are at Casa Grande National Monument, an impressive National Park Service site in Coolidge, Arizona. It's about an hour from both Phoenix and Tucson. You can clearly see the Great House, but the Casa Grande community was not just that. There were at least seven separate residential compounds, and at its peak, probably 2,000 people lived here. As a child living just over the mountains to the north, a short drive from the ruins, this was a common field trip site. I fell in love with it and wanted to learn more. Clearly I'm not alone since you're watching, and I hope you learn more about this amazing location built by an amazing people. The Spanish called it Casa Grande, meaning Great House. It's known as the Sivan Vaki by the native Oodon people, which is loosely translated as Ancient House or Ruler's House. The Oodon are the people who were living in this area when the Spanish came. They were formerly known as the Pima Indians. Many of these people live on the nearby Gila River Indian community, which is home to both the Oodon and the Peeposh people. The first European to see Casa Grande was Father Kino, a famous Spanish explorer who traveled throughout the southwest and gave this location its name. In 1694, he came across the abandoned ruins. You may be familiar with the name Hohokam for the people who lived here in ancient times. That is probably a misunderstood Oodam word for the people who came before, or ancestors. Hohokam is not what the people still living in this area called those ancestors. The more proper term for the people is now ancestral Sonoran desert people, while the culture is still called Hohokam. They are the ancestors of the Oodam people, still living throughout this part of Arizona. The Hopi and Zuni peoples, further north in Arizona and New Mexico, also trace their ancestry back to these Sonoran Desert people. These ancestral Sonoran Desert people lived in the Salt and Gila River valleys. They created huge canal systems and had large trading networks. They had cultural contacts with peoples to the south in Mexico and even shared their ball courts. These ball courts eventually gave way in their culture to platform mounds and large buildings enclosed by walls. This occurred in what is called the Classical Period. That's the last period of Hohokam culture, with this cultural period beginning around 1100 and collapsing around 1450 AD. In 1846, U.S. troops under General Kearney were the first Americans to see Casa Grande. It became part of the U.S. after the Gadsden Purchase. A railroad went through in the 1870s, and that led to tourists. Of course, that's always a double-edged sword. It's nice to have people to get to learn about something, but it's not so nice that tourists are prone to, well, vandalizing things. In 1884, the first anthropologist came to inspect the ruins, and in 1885, the first repair and construction efforts began. By 1892, an executive order made this the first archaeological reserve in the United States. A roof was put up to help prevent erosion in 1903, and in 1918, it became a national monument. In 1932, a new roof made of steel would be put over the ruins of the big house and other park buildings built as well. It's funny how, since that came so early in the national park movement, these buildings and the steel roof are now actually on the register of National Historic Places. The Great House itself is four stories high. The five rooms on the first floor are currently filled in, though. The next two floors each have five rooms and one room on top, making 11 extant rooms. It was all apparently built at one time using caliche, which is a clay-like layer that's found in desert soils. No forms were used to make adobe bricks. It was just the piling up of thick, hard caliche mud applied by hand. The walls are three to five feet thick at the base and two feet on top. They were plastered over and painted with a reddish clay. The beams used to support the roof and floors were made from trees that were cut down over 50 miles away. Why was it built? Well, there's a simple question nobody's thought of before. <laughs> well, all sarcasm aside, probably for multiple purposes. We know it was used as an observatory, this diagram shows where holes were placed in walls to show what important astronomical events such as solstices and equinoxes would happen. It could also have been a fortress, a religious temple, a residence for rulers, 
a storage facility for crop surpluses, or an administrative center. As these things usually are, it was most likely many, if not all, of those things. The ancestors of these people were hunter-gatherers, hunting for meat and gathering plant foods to eat. They eventually transitioned into agriculture about 4,000 years ago, planting the classical three sisters, corn, squash, and beans. The early agricultural people lived in pit houses, as you can see here reconstructed at another Hoakam site, which helped keep them warm in the winter and cooler in the summer. They were pits dug into the ground with walls and a roof added, then plastered over. The homes were typically arranged in a family compound around a central ramada. The homes were dark and many activities such as cooking and crafting probably took place outside. In time, the people moved from pit houses to the above-ground adobe pueblo-type houses like these, but they still kept them in family groups. A few centuries later, they began to use irrigation to more reliably supply water to their crops. Early in history, these people would learn to control the water of the rivers. They dug canals and smaller irrigation ditches with simple digging sticks and hoes. They made many miles of canals on both the Gila and Salt Rivers, and those would grow to systems that would become the most complex canal systems north of Peru. They would truly make the desert bloom. I can remember as a kid not understanding how they would get water to their farm fields along the Gila River when the river is below the level of their fields. The trick is that they weren't taking water out of the river right there. They made canals that went up to 15 miles upstream to where the river was actually above their level. So as the water flowed down, it was going downhill all the way to their fields. Throughout this Gila River Valley and the Salt River Valley, here where Phoenix is, there were incredible networks of canals looking almost like the roots of trees. Hohokam culture goes back to around 500 AD. The Casa Grande area itself began to be farmed around 1500 years ago. This area was, and still is, a very successful place to produce food as well as cotton. It continued to be occupied and grew up through the so-called Classical period, starting at about 1100 AD. In the 1300s, construction began on the Big House. The Big House was only 100 years old when the community was completely abandoned. That, of course, leads to the question, why was it abandoned? And like every other question, it seems, many theories exist. Overpopulation, drought, flooding, internal strife, and the ever-popular all of the above. I've heard one possible explanation that I really think may be it. I'm of the opinion that often our myths and legends have that little kernel of history in them. There is an Oodam story that talks of the rulers of these villages with their platform mounds and big houses having grown too full of themselves and they had rebelled against the divine figure Elder Brother. Elder Brother left and brought back the people from prior to the platform mounds and the big houses and they chased away these evil ones who had been ruling over the people and disrespecting Elder Brother. Casa Grande was actually said to be the first site of this civil war or revolution that eventually affected the whole whole calm culture. This would be like something that's happened in other places throughout history when populations grow and become dependent on systems that require organizing community labor, such as huge irrigation systems. It takes somebody to be in charge to organize more and more complex societies. Hierarchies take control, and those people start ruling over the people for more than just the group work. It's good to be the king. Eventually, the people may revolt against the elites. It may well be that this is what happened to these folks at the end of the classical period of the Hohokam. The serfs had had enough of the rulers and chased them off, or maybe worse, and started living in a more dispersed life without the advanced irrigation system, but living a more free lifestyle. This leads to another mystery that I grew up hearing, 
And this one isn't a mystery at all. Where do the people who lived here go? Well, they're all around. They're the native people that live here now. Why is Casa Grande important? Well, it's the pinnacle of Hoacom architectural achievement. It's unique as the only remaining great house. There were others, but this is the only one that's left, probably because it was built towards the end of the culture. Casa Grande is a historical landmark to native peoples, the Spanish, later the Americans, and it's still culturally important to the Oodon people that live in the area today. It has a wonderful visitor center with an incredibly good set of educational displays. The park is open from 9 to 4 most days, closed just those significant feral holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving. And as a nice touch, there's no fee to visit. I'm glad I could share a little bit of this man-made wonder with you and hope you want to learn more and maybe visit yourself. Thanks for watching. Can you do me a favor and help spread this channel around with a like and a subscribe? Thanks and I'll see you next time.